Hello, and it's question week here at God Why. We had open mic Sunday, and today is Wednesday, July the 25th, and we're talking about questions from the wall about heaven. Now, we had several. The first one is, when we die, will we be ghosts? Now, interestingly enough, we are, at our essence, spirit. We are spirits. Now, a ghost is really a spirit spirit without a body, I guess, or a disembodied spirit. But when we talk about ghosts as they are traditionally known, the answer would be no. We will still be ourselves. In fact, Scripture says we will receive a glorified body that we will inhabit. In Philippians 3, 20 through 21, it says our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enabled him even to subject all things to himself. So, we will not be a disembodied spirit or a ghost uh, or whatever terminology that might be, but we will uh, have a whatever a glorified body is, like Christ. So, we won't be ghosts as we traditionally know ghosts. So the next one is, uh, will we recognize our loved ones in heaven? Yeah, that's part of, I think, why we get the glorified body. As we look in Matthew 8, 11, he says, I, uh, I say to all of you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast, speaking of in the last days in heaven, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. With Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, if we're going to know who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are, we're going to know who people are. We're going to recognize this. In fact, 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Now we, now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, but then we'll sh we shall see face to face. Now we know in part, that, we, but then we will know fully, even as we are fully known. So it looks like, yes, we're going to know who these people are. We're going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We'll know them as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will know fully, even as we are fully known. People will know us as well. Which brings us to the next question, which is, uh, in the rapture, will our pets uh, be in heaven with us? And this is a question I get asked occasionally. And we don't have a verse about this. We don't have any scripture that talks. Obviously, there is no salvation for animals, but I don't know that there's any fall for animals either. That is strictly a human convention. Here's what I do know, however. When God created in perfection the world, he went crazy over animals. We know that there are probably estimated a trillion different species of animal on the planet. We haven't even come close to figuring out what's in the sea. We don't have any idea uh, if, how many more are yet to be discovered in the Amazon jungle, in the deserts, at different places. The ones that we have categorized, categorized just not counting the oceans, or all, just invertebrates, animals that stand up that we already know are over a million six hundred thousand that we can category and classify. Then you start getting uh, into the invertebrates and into the oceans and it just multiplies beyond measure. If God is that into animals, then I cannot imagine heaven not being incredibly populated just like the earth is with all manner of animal. And if I believe personally that if our animals, our pets, are close to us, part of our family. If that is part of our family, then God surely understands that, and I bet we'll find them all there. So, that would be my answer to that. Uh, the next question is, uh, uh, what does God expect us to leave behind in uh, when we go to heaven? Uh, the only passage that I could think of was 1 Corinthians 13, 13. He said, now these three remain. In other words, when you boil it all down, there's only three things that really remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I believe that in the final analysis, when he says that the old heaven and the old earth will be transformed with fervent heat, that they will be remade into a new heaven and a new earth back to perfection, that the only thing that's really going to remain are those relationships, faith, hope, and love. And that is the core. 
of everything that really has eternal value. So that would be my answer to that. The last one is, will I still get to go to heaven if I stay home and watch Wimbledon? You know, it's interesting. God does not measure our spirituality by are we in church every single Sunday. Now, that's very counterproductive for me. I need you here, right? Why do I need you here? Why? Well, because I need your participation. Scripture says, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together, as is the custom of some. Why? We need each other. Paul described us as the body of Christ. He said it with each joint and ligament supporting the other. He said that we're supposed to be like iron, sharpening iron, that we can't have that community. I give the illustration all the time. Is it possible to become a professional baseball player if I only play ball by myself in my backyard? The answer is theoretically it is possible, but practically, not really. You see, I can never learn to hit a curveball unless somebody's throwing me a curveball. I can never learn to feel just by throwing the ball at myself. I've got to have somebody hit that ball with incredible velocity. For me to be able to work on uh, uh, catching and throwing and accuracy and how to run a double play, I can't do that unless I'm playing not just with somebody, but with people of that caliber. I need those incredible players around me to make me an incredible player. And I believe the same thing is true. If I am not around other people who are growing in their faith, if I'm not in a community that sharpens me, where iron sharpens iron, where there's some sparks every once in a while, where I learn from them, they learn from me, where we support each other and walk together and do life together, then I'm not going to have what I need. That's the reason he said, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Is community important? Vitally. Is church a important part of my growth spiritually? Absolutely. But if I miss one Sunday, is God going to uh, turn his back on me? No, probably not. Why? Because if I'm in the community, I'm there. In fact, I even said one time, I said, you know, the great thing about God is he's omnipresent. He can be at Wimbledon and be at church at the same time. I only get to be one place. I'm either there or I'm here. And I believe that God is there too. So it's not legalism, but I need that community of faith. Well, that's it. Questions on heaven. I'll see you tomorrow with more questions. <laughs>